I'm Alexis Schwerhaw with Campus Reform. With March being Women's History Month, I am thrilled to welcome Abby Roth, best known as Classically Abby, to talk more about this concept of what it means to live classically. Her YouTube channel covers so many different topics that range from living classically to living the conservative life. Abby, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm so excited. Of course. You know, to kick this off, I just wanted to quickly touch on your YouTube channel. A major thing that you talk about is this idea of living classically and living with traditional values. Can you quickly explain what this means to our audience? Yeah, absolutely. So I that is my kind of saying, classic living and traditional values. Uh, I like to start with traditional values because I think that's the basis of everything. And traditional values basically means prioritizing the most important things, which are faith, family, and community. Strong societies are built on these things. Civilizations last are because of these, these priorities. And when we value them, we find that things are better. <laughs> Life is better, not only on a personal and an individual level, but on the greater you know, societal level, which is an amazing, amazing thing to think about. I mean, it's an incredible foundation to build your own life of life on, and then as well to just have civilizations built on. So I think it's kind of, you can look at it from a more personal perspective, absolutely. And then you can also see how it actually is greater than just you by seeing history, you know. Um, once you move on from the idea of traditional values, classic living is living out those things in a way that makes sense. So embracing femininity, embracing the differences between men and women, not saying that one is better than the other, but that we have strengths and weaknesses that balance each other out. Um, finding the ways to grow and better yourself so that you're constantly becoming the best version of you. That is classic living and embracing reality is something that I always say. Once you can embrace reality, then you can actually grow and become better. Absolutely. And it's such a great way to live, but it's really not what we call the mainstream nowadays. I know growing up, I wasn't exactly taught to live classically, but um, it was more something that wasn't always on the front of my mind. So I'm really curious, what inspired you to want to live classically, but also make a YouTube channel out of it? Yeah, so it's kind of an interesting story. <laughs> I, uh, I grew up you know, living a more, I would say, traditional lifestyle because I grew up in a religious Orthodox Jewish family. Uh, when I went to college, I was still in that vein. But then when I went to get my master's, I went to New York City and I grew up in Los Angeles. And for the first time, I was really away from home. And the only people I was surrounded with were people who lived out this leftist narrative, this empowerment narrative, which I hate that that word has been taken from from any from us. I, I think that the word empowerment has been like bastardized to mean something totally different than what it actually means. And I bought into that for about two and a half to three years when I was surrounded by people who believed in it. And I didn't have anyone else to kind of bounce my own conservative ideas off of. And when once I met my husband and realized that I wanted to have a traditional life, I wanted to raise my children, I wanted to be available for them, I wanted to be around my husband, I realized how important it was for me to start living a classic life again, and kind of going back to my roots. And once I realized that I realized I really wanted to share that journey and process with my followers, with subscribers, with people and other women in around me, in and around me. And so I started my channel with the idea of I have seen what makes me unhappy. And that is this feminist empowerment narrative. And now I see what makes me truly happy, which is living classically and embracing traditional values. So by doing that, you can also find meaning and fulfillment. And that was kind of my goal is bringing meaning and fulfillment to women who are not getting that narrative on, you know, on the daily from, <laughs> from media, from the women around them, from the people around them. And I'm really glad you touched on you know, the full female empowerment thing, because it seems overwhelmingly that feminism and female empowerment has been a term that's been taken and pushed by this progressive left. I mean, we see this all the time here at Campus Reform, that the culture on college campuses seems to follow this idea of what's known as second wave feminism or now third and fourth wave feminism. So can you touch on a little bit about how this affects young women? Absolutely. So I really highly recommend if you haven't read it already, check out Christina Hoff Summers book, Who Stole Feminism? So Christina Hoff Summers is an interesting person because she's not actually 
conservative. She's not Republican, but she is very anti the modern wave of feminism. And what she talks about in her book is really the idea of gender feminism, which is born out of a Marxist ideology. And the idea of gender feminism is that no matter how equal our rights are, no matter how, how many equal opportunities men and women have, women are born victims and men are born oppressors. Now that is a Marxist idea, right? The idea that there's always going to be a victim, there's always going to be an oppressor, no matter what the actual reality of the situation is, that's just how things are. That's the way things have been constructed in our society. This is an incredibly negative thing for young women to hear day in and day out. Imagine feeling and being told that you are constantly a victim, no matter how well you do, no matter how successful you are, you will still be a victim. A victim mentality, unless, I mean, let's be honest, of course, there are real victims in the world. Of course, there are people who have been victimized, but there are also the people who haven't been. And being told that you're a victim constantly, it prevents you actually from doing good and from feeling strong and going out there and being able to say, I'm going to succeed. You are feeling, you're constantly kind of put on this um, track of feeling like you're going to fail because you're fighting all the time to break a glass ceiling that at this point has been broken. We are very, very blessed to live in a time where, we where men and women are equal. We have accomplished that. And so for us to constantly be telling young women that no, even if you are successful, you're not equal. Of course, women hate womanhood. Of course, women don't want to embrace femininity. And of course, you have, you know, I just read Abigail Schreier's book, Irreversible Damage. Of course, you have women, young women who are thinking, why would I want to be a woman? Maybe I want to try this transgender thing and be a man. Being a woman sounds terrible. <laughs> so I think it's just a really negative and has such a negative impact on young women. Instead of saying women are amazing and we have so much to offer and we have so many opportunities to do so. Absolutely. And it's really unfortunate that, you know, this narrative is being pushed on young women, especially college age women, because, you know, college is a time where these young women are going and they're really finding themselves and finding what makes them unique. And I don't know about you, but there is nothing more unique than being a woman. And, you know, the differences we have should be celebrated. So I want to kind of shift the topic a little bit and talk more about a recent video that you talked about, this whole concept of hookup culture and sex before marriage. You know, I mentioned in the last question that college campus have really been pushing this idea of second, third, fourth wave feminism, um, talking about how you referred to as female empowerment in the way that's been taken over by the left. Here at Campus Reform, we covered extensively on all these sex week events that were happening at places like Ohio State, where they had students write thank you letters to abortion providers, or at Wentworth Institute of Technology, where they funded an event that taught students how to achieve what they called the female orgasm. So when we're hearing of all this stuff that's being peddled on college campuses, what do you think is the message? being sent? And how should women feel about being kind of reduced down to a sexuality? I mean, they should not feel good. <laughs> women are much more than just that. And, and sex is so much more than just the physical. Uh, I've been doing a lot of reading on this topic lately. I read the book Cheap Sex by Mark Regnerus. I'm giving you guys a bunch of different book recommendations today. So check out Cheap Sex by Mark Regnerus. I also read a book called The Joy of Intimacy. And it was kind of on the on the back end of that shameless plug on my uh, Substack newsletter, we have a book club. And so that was what we did. We read Cheap Sex. And then right afterwards, we read uh, The Joy of Intimacy. And it's so sad to see sex completely reduced to a physical experience. Sex is so much more than that. And really what it is, is a way for us to express emotional emotional intimacy in a physical way. And the kind of start of all this, and I think it's really important to mention, is the beginning, the, be, the beginning of all this was with the advent of birth control. When we had birth control available on a wide scale, it meant that sex was completely separate from procreation. And now people view sex as something that should not lead to having a baby, that it's unnatural for pregnancy to come out of sex, which is, of course, the opposite of the truth. Now, it's not to say that every time you have sex, you have a baby. That's not at all my point. But there was an idea that when you have sex, there is a risk that you can have a child with that person. And that makes sex a lot more serious than just, 
oh, I want to kind of have a physical stimulation today. So when we are seeing young women engage in hookup culture on campuses, I don't think that they actually are doing it because they want to, because at the end of the day, they're not getting this, the same levels of satisfaction as women who are in committed marriage relationships. When you are you know, not, not feeling safe in a sexual encounter, when you don't know if the person that you're being intimate with is going to care about you the next day, you can't really enjoy sex in the same way as when you're with someone who has committed himself to you. And so even though we're told that female empowerment is going out and having sex with as many partners as you want, you're, what you want in a moment is not what you're going to want the next day or 10 years down the line. What you really are going to want is a committed relationship with somebody who loves you, respects you, and wants to share emotional intimacy with you in a physical way. Right. And at the end of the day, I think that's the ultimate goal is going out and finding your person. And it's so special when you can share that with, you know, the person that you're meant to be with. But nowadays, a lot of women are feeling this societal pressure to, you know, partake in hookup culture. Uh, the studies from a little while ago, but in 2013, the APA was releasing a set of like consequences from having, you know, premarital sex and participating in hookup culture. And there are like, serious psychological and emotional setbacks that come from it, including, you know, increased embarrassment. Um, we have a lot of pr pressure that's put on these young women. So how can they kind of break this cycle? I mean, I think it really comes down to asking your, there's two things. One is a support system. Absolutely. Finding people who share your values, finding dating within cultures that share your values, you know, going to church, if you're a Christian or going to synagogue, if you're Jewish, finding guys who agree oh, okay. with you on these things. And then number two is asking yourself the big question, is female empowerment actually making me happier? Is it actually bringing me meaning and fulfillment? And I think that you'll find that for most women, the answer is no. I think that we are, we feel pressured to believe that female, this female empowerment narrative is going to make us better or make us feel stronger. And then when we look in the mirror and, you know, the day after a hookup, you see yourself and you're like, I don't feel good. This didn't make me feel better about myself. This didn't make me feel happy. This didn't give me any meaning or fulfillment. And when you look in the mirror and you say that, I think that's kind of the starting point for, okay, now I, I might need to make a shift. And that shift will make you much, make you feel so much more in control. And I think so much of being in college is feeling out of control. So if you can feel any level of control for your choices and your life, this is a really good place to start because you will feel like you are in control of the, of the way that your body is interacting with other people. And now I do want to shift the conversation a little more and kind of talk about this backlash that sometimes college conservatives can feel on college campuses. Now, you are an outspoken conservative. You talk a lot about classic living, which, as we've talked about, is not exactly mainstream. And you've received a lot of pushback, a lot of backlash for it. College conservatives feel similar when, you know, they're out there tabling, expressing conservative values, and they're being shut down. They're being insulted. So how do you kind of power through this and remain true to your values? You know, I think for me particularly, fighting for truth always gives me a strength I, I, in a way I didn't know I had. So if you know that you're fighting for what's right, if you know that this is truth, that traditional values are going to make people have a better life, it's easier to combat that negative reaction that you're going to get from people because you know what you're doing is for a good purpose. And that's a really bolstering idea. Now, that doesn't mean that you can do it alone. And I think that's really the biggest thing is finding those support systems. Things like um, going to, like I said, finding your community is going to make such a big difference for how you approach going out there and feeling confident to talk about these ideas. And also, I think that this is the most important thing is always being educated. If you don't know why you believe a certain thing, if you don't know kind of have a background on what you believe, then if you get into a conversation with someone who disagrees with you, then they can very easily change your mind. And they would have a right to because you didn't know enough to engage. So you're allowed to say, you know, I don't know, but you need to take the time to figure it out. And I think that's another thing is if you feel like you understand where you're where you're coming from, if you feel like you understand your own positions, 
then you you won't be shaken in the same way by the way that people react to you because you have a good, solid foundation for what you're saying. Right. And then to kind of go off that as a quick follow up question, what impact do you want your message to be uh, to your audience? You know, my my idea is sort of it's funny. We kind of mentioned it earlier. My idea is to bring empowerment to women in the right way (laughs) is using empowerment in the conservative sense. I want women to feel empowered in their femininity. I want women to feel empowered in their womanhood. And I want women to know that they're not victims of society. They are strong and incredible. And we have an amazing role to play. So I like teaching women and sharing with women my own journey on this path. And I like showing how there's a possibility for you to feel meaning and find meaning and fulfillment through these kind of well-known practices of, you know, faith, family, and community. And once you do those things, once you have engaged with those things, you'll start to see that you have a big appreciation for what you were born as a woman. And that's an amazing thing. And just to wrap us up here, what advice do you have for young women, whether it be high school age, college age, that might feel like they're at a crossroads here? They want to embrace classic living. They want to embrace their conservative values, but they might not exactly know how. I mean, that is a it's a fun time. I will say it's actually fun to start taking those first steps towards embracing femininity and embracing classic living. I would say start small, figure out something that makes you happy and you enjoy doing, whether that be styling your hair in a new way and maybe thinking about keeping your dorm room cleaner than you have, or just figuring out ways that you want to better yourself and move in a direction that will actually provide for you in this way, provide for you like in your soul. So start learning how to do a little bit of makeup or going to church more, more regularly. And I think as you take these small steps, you'll start to see that you are enjoying your life more and you're starting to see through the lies and the negative, uh, the negative perceptions that media is trying to sell women. Right. Great words of wisdom there. Abby, we appreciate you coming on today. Thank you so much for your insight.